Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to carry out a titration. Now titrations are really important in chemistry. We can use a titration to determine the concentration of a solution, for example an acid or an alkali, and you may have seen that in your GCSEs. In A-level chemistry we can carry out relatively simple titrations such as this, but you'll also see more complex ones such as redox titrations. In this video I'll take you through the stages of a titration. We'll be looking at a simple titration between an acid and an alkali, but the principles will apply to more complex ones such as redox titrations. The key idea of a titration is that we take a fixed volume of a solution with a known concentration. We then react it with a solution with an unknown concentration. If we accurately measure the volume needed to react, then we can determine the concentration of our solution. We're going to react an acid with an unknown concentration, with an alkali with a known concentration. So first, we need to measure an accurate fixed volume of our alkali. To do that, we use a pipette, usually with a volume of 25 centimeters cubed. Pipettes have a very fine line near the top. This shows the level where the volume is exactly 25 centimeters cubed. So first, we rinse the pipette with distilled water to remove any unwanted chemicals. Now at this point, the pipette will contain droplets of water, and these would dilute any solution which we use the pipette to measure. So next, we rinse the pipette with our alkali, and we discard this alkali down the sink. Next, we place our conical flask right next to the beaker containing the alkali. The conical flask should have been rinsed carefully with distilled water, to remove any traces of unwanted chemicals. I should point out that we don't need to worry about traces of water in the flask, as this will not interfere with the reaction. Next we place the tip of the pipette into the alkali, and draw the alkali into the pipette using a pipette filler. Now we need to do this carefully and slowly, as we want to avoid bubbles. Remember that the level of the alkali in the beaker will fall, so we need to watch to make sure that the tip of the pipette is still below the surface. Now the key point is that we need to fill the pipette past the 25 centimeters cube mark. That's because the level of the liquid drops slightly when we lift the pipette out of the alkali. If we measured exactly to the 25 centimeters cubed line, then when we lift the pipette, the liquid will drop below this, and that means that our volume won't be accurate. So now we carefully lift the pipette out of the alkali, and then very slowly release drops of the alkali. We want the bottom of the meniscus to exactly lie on the 25 centimeters cube mark. It's also really important that we view the meniscus at eye level. Now at this point we move the pipette over the conical flask and release the alkali. When the alkali has been released, you'll notice a tiny amount left in the pipette. To transfer that, we touch the very tip of the pipette into the alkali. Now we have exactly 25 centimeters cubed of alkali in the conical flask. Now in an acid-base titration, we need to use an indicator to determine the end point. We'll be looking at indicators in much more detail in a later topic. With a strong acid, strong base titration, we could use the indicators phenolphthalein or methyl orange. If we're titrating a weak acid with a strong base, then phenolphthalein would be suitable. And if we're titrating a strong acid with a weak base, then we could use methyl orange. A key point is that we must only add a few drops of indicator, for example 4. That's because indicators are weak acids, so if we added a lot of indicator, that could give us inaccurate results. Coming up, we'll discuss how to use the burette. Ok, now in this section we're going to use a burette to measure the volume of acid that reacts with our alkali. The first thing we need to do is rinse the burette with distilled water. This removes any unwanted chemicals from the burette. We then rinse the burette with acid to remove any traces of water. Next we clamp the burette so that it's level. At this stage we now use a funnel and slowly fill the burette with acid. We want the level of acid to be slightly above the zero line. Next we remove the funnel. This prevents acid from dripping from the funnel into the burette. At this stage we now open the tap and allow acid to slowly leave the burette. We want the bottom of the meniscus exactly on the zero centimeters cubed mark. Now it can be difficult to make out the position of the meniscus, 
So to make this easier, it's a good idea to hold a piece of white paper behind the burette. And remember that we must always read the meniscus at eye level. Now we place our conical flask containing the alkali onto a white tile. This will make the colour change of the indicator easier to see accurately. Now we open the tap on the burette and slowly release acid into the conical flask. At the same time we swirl the conical flask. Swirling ensures that the acid and alkali mix thoroughly so they can react. Now while we swirl we need to watch the colour of the indicator. We stop adding acid when the indicator changes colour to show the end point. At this stage we read the level of the acid on the burette. Now I just want to make a quick point about reading the burette. The scale markings on a burette are to the nearest 0.1 cm cubed. For an analogue piece of equipment such as a burette, the uncertainty is considered to be half the scale division. This means that the uncertainty on a burette is 0.05 cm cubed. So what that means is that if the meniscus lies between two scale divisions, then we record the volume to the nearest 0.05 cm cubed. So for example the volume on this burette would be 19.25 cm cubed. Subtracting the start volume from the final volume gives us our titer, in other words the volume of acid that reacts with our alkali. Remember that we need to record our start and final volumes to two decimal places. Ok, now our first titration is considered to be a rough titration. So now we rinse our conical flask and repeat the titration. However this time we've got an idea of the titer. So now when we approach the end point we add our acid drop by drop. We keep repeating our titration until we have two concordant titers. And concordant titers are within 0.1 cm cubed. So as you can see in these results titrations 1 and 3 are concordant. We now calculate a mean of the concordant titers. Now in the case of these results the mean will be to two decimal places i.e. 10.15 cm cubed. But if you look at these results we would record this mean to three decimal places. Ok so hopefully now you can describe how to carry out a titration.